Hello and welcome to the Blood and Pigment channel. Today we're continuing our series on Blood and Plunder Legends. I'm Joseph and I'm here with Dan and Guy. Dan, who are we looking at today? We're looking at Piet Hein, the Dutch Admiral who did the impossible. He captured the Spanish treasure fleet in 1628. Guy, what else do we know about him? He started his career in the Dutch merchant fleet before being captured by Spain and spending 10 years on the Spanish galley. He would later work for both the West India Company and the East India Company. When he captured the treasure fleet as a privateer, he captured a total of 16 Spanish ships and a boatload of money. More than a boatload, 16 boatloads of money. In Blood and Plunder, Piet Hein costs 40 points and may lead Dutch privateers, Dutch Navy, and Hein's Commissavardes. He has three command points, a 20-inch command range, and is armed with thine holiest brace of pistols, and a standard melee weapon. He has the broadside, special rule, Commodore, God's Blessing of the Devil's Luck, very inspiring, bold, and indomitable. Another boat, 16 boatloads of special rules. <laughs> so, the biggest, baddest Dutch commander in the game. You love the Dutch, Dan? How do you like this guy in, on the table? I mean, he kind of, the Dutch already do good at everything. You can shoot cannons and board. He adds that real bit of flavor to him that makes him even better. Because he's got broadside, which is good. He's got those crucial three points, which allows you to fire a four deck ship with his 20 inch range. So you can use a six rate or a galleon and fire off all four decks because you have the command points and the range to do it. And he's really good at boarding. He's really good at boarding. If you stick him with the Groove of Enter Plogue, there's nothing that's stopping him. You just get to watch your opponent cry as you slowly mop their decks with their own blood. <laughs> His bold ability helps him with that, right? He can, even well engaged in melee or shaken, he can send out command points. That is pretty powerful. Yeah, and Indomitable is even, is oh, it's, it's amazing. It is glorious, my favorite word. If he starts shaking... He gets to remove a fatigue point and then activate as normal if he has less than three. Yeah, and if you stick him with Enter Plogue, who already got a resolve of four, they're not going to get any fatigue. And if they do manage to get shaken, nope, not anymore. Sucks to be you. <laughs> yeah, and with his 20-inch command range and Commodore, he's essentially, during his activation, covering the whole board. So if you have him in a as a fleet admiral with three ships using the army uh, scale rules, He's commanding all three ships with that 32-inch range, like usual with commanders like this. He could conceivably do a broadside if you the stars aligned and you got your biggest decks on four different ships. You could shoot off, if they're all galleons, how many heavy cannons could you shoot at once? Like 20 heavy cannons at the same time? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> all of the heavy cannons. Yeah. <laughs> now, what about... Heinz Commissavarders, that's his private faction. They're very Dutch in flavor. They have some similar rules as the other naval Dutch factions. But the thing that stands out to me, especially combined with his uh, commander rules, is all units in the force gain the tough special rule. So not only does he have Indomitable, and if he's on the interplug, as Dan mandates, he has four <laughs> resolve and tough and Indomitable. He's just shaking off fatigue like nobody's business. Yeah, he's basically a sloop before fatigue because the sloop doesn't care about the wind. Piet Hyden <laughs> and Mentor Plogue don't care about fatigue. You'd have to expend a stupid amount of firepower to get maybe one point of fatigue because of that resolve. And if you manage to get three through luck, he goes, yeah, that was nice, but we're coming back. Uh, hey, Dan, you can't put him on Mentor Plogue because they're a support unit. <laughs> he only has Z-Land, Z-Lighten and Kate Coppers as a core in his faction so yes in his faction they nerfed that a little bit but the other two factions you can all the dutch and evil factions are pretty good his personal force gets a plus three for attackers so you're pretty much guaranteed to attack that's nice he gets the shallow draft trait he has that oh my goodness another fatigue rule when attack uh, when attacked by a unit of six inches way or less units in this force may re-roll a single fatigue die resulting from the attack so he has three ways to mitigate fatigue in his personal force and he gets to reroll a failed grapple test once per turn all units that six inch way roll does seem a little odd but that is perfect for when you're going to be doing a boarding action and they yeah. use a defensive attack that's what it's meant for is that you can fire through smoke and fire right. attack when he's going over the board. Yeah. yeah 
the reroll and grapple checks is also great for boarding. So hear me out. The other two factions have the Interplogue as core units, just not in his own faction. I think that's a balancing act, because if you put him with tough Interplogue, that would be broken. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about using this guy. He's, he's 40 points, which is a lot. If you're playing a 200-point game, that's almost a fourth of your total points in one man. How, are, how, do, you, how do you use him? You only use 300-point games? I've managed to get him into a 200 point game and I ran a cannon list. I brought him and I stripped all my Z Leiden of all their pistols and had him run cans, I think on a light frigate. And he still does his job. You know, t you're having tough Z Leiden on cannons. It's hard to fatigue him out. Yeah, it is. To be honest, I'm a little frustrated with how expensive the legendaries are. I mean, it has to be balanced, but it's so infrequent that people play these because of how expensive they are. So. Yeah, they're best in big games, but those big games don't happen that much because they're long. So sometimes I wanted to just say, let's do a 200 point game. We all have to take legendary commanders. So these gags get on the table. They're so fun and flavorful and interesting, but yeah, they're hard to play. That's you know, a lot regular, like uh, the campaigns when you get to bring your commander for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be a that would be a cool thing. And do a, we're playing legendary games. No points legendary cost for your knight. command. Yeah, legendary knight. Your commander is zero points, but you must bring a legendary commander. I mean, if everybody has to play legendary, you don't have to make them cost zero. Just inflate your numbers a little bit to two hundred and fifty or whatever, mm -hmm. or just two hundred, and everybody eats the cost. But if everybody's eating the cost, then it's still reasonably fair. It'd be a lot of fun to see these guys. I I do like this guy's model. It's uh, based on a painting of his that's kind of famous. I believe it's a statue. A statue. Oh, yeah. Cool. I wrote about that in my article that I've submitted. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been published because I don't have a paint of the guy, so we don't have any pictures of him. <laughs> He's like the only model of Blood and Thunder I haven't painted yet. <laughs> Tragic. Well, so we we did touch on some of the pros of this guy. He's great. His con, his really only real one is that he's expensive and that his own faction cannot have core Enterplog. I am crying literally right now because of that <laughs> i think it's more fair that way <laughs> yeah he has pretty much everything you'd really want he has four fortune he has very inspiring in addition to tough and <laughs> um zealanders uh yeah he's perfect for going into melee so if you want somebody for that he's your man um if you're gonna play him on land too you can put him with Soldatin using his uh, naval landing force option. So. Right. He has an option to make them core units. Yeah, his only his broadside and Commodore rules are custom for C, so he's decent on land, even though that's not really what he's his specialty, but all around good commander. Just the 40 points is the hard thing to stomach. Yep. Yeah, very Dutch. Good at just about everything. Blasted Dutch. Well, I think that wraps it up. For more Blood and Plunder articles, including all the adoring uh, articles on the Dutch by Dan, Woo! you can go over to bloodandpigment.com and check out what we have there. We have stuff on ships and nations and factions and terrain building and painting guides and battle reports and all things Blood and Plunder. Check it out there. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel as well. We'll be aiming to put out a video every Monday. Subscribe and ring the ship's bell so you can stay notified of our uploads. As always, keep your dice ready, the wind at your back, your horror.